بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين This is major uh, one, the first major of math 101 term 222 uh, Let us have a look and solve the exam uh, together First question uh, We have given uh, two sets A and B and U is the universal set, and the question find A intersection B. Well, A intersection B are all the numbers in A and B at the same time. So I have one in A, but not in B, so this is not in the, in the intersection. I have three here and here, so three is in the intersection, five is not, eight is in both, so it is in the intersection, seven is not, two is not, so that's all, three and eight, the only numbers in the intersection of the two sets. Good. Second question, find uh, A union B complement. To find A union B complement, let us find A union B first. A union B, all the numbers uh, in A, or in B. So I will write all the numbers in A first, 1, 3, 5, 8, 7, 2. And I add the numbers of B that are not here. So 4, 8 is already here, and 10. So this is the union of A and B. Complement, this uh, dash means complement. So uh, what is in the universal, not in A union B, would be in the complement. So I have one, two, three, four, five. Six is not here, but it is in the universal. So it would be in the complement. I seven, eight I have, but nine I don't. So nine is in the complement. 10 is there, but 11 is not there. So this is the answer. Solve uh, this equation. Well, you can multiply by the LCD here. I have X plus seven. I have two and I have three. So the LCD is six times X plus seven. We can multiply each term by six times X plus seven. But I'd like to solve it differently. I have two times X plus seven here. I have X plus seven here. So I will multiply the first fraction by two up and down. So I'll have four X plus seven. 10, I multiply it to x plus 5 by 2, and here I have 2x plus 7. So I'll bring this term to the other side. So it would be minus x minus 11 over 2 times x plus 7 equals 1 over 3. You can solve it in another way, okay? But I'd like to solve it like this. I have the same denominator, so I need only to subtract the numerators. So I have 4x minus x, that's 3x, 10 minus minus 11, that's 10 plus 11, which is 21 over 2 times x plus 7 equals 1 over 3. I will notice something. I notice that 3x plus 21, if I take 3 as a common factor, I'll have x plus 7 up. So now I can cancel x plus 7 with x plus 7. And I have 3 over 2 equals 1 over 3. And this is impossible. This is not correct. So the solution set as 5. There is no solution of this equation. Okay. If you want to multiply by the conjugate, let me, let me do it for you. Sorry, by the LCD. So if I multiply the first term, by 6 times x plus 7, x plus 7 will be cancelled with x plus 7, and I'll have 6 times 2x plus 5 equals. And 1 over 3 times 6x plus 7, 3 will be cancelled with 3 here, so I'll still have 2 times x plus 7 plus Uh, 2x plus 7 multiplied by 6x plus 7, I'll still have 3 times x minus 11. Now, 
let us expand 12 x plus 30 equals to x plus 14 plus 3x minus 33. Take all the x's together. I have 2x plus 3x here. That's 5x. Take it to the other side. I'll have 12x minus 5x. That's 7x. Now, in the right-hand side, I have negative 33 plus 14. Well, 14 minus 33 is negative 90. Then add, bring this 30 to the other side. It would be negative 30. Negative 30 minus 19 would be negative 49. Dividing by 7, x would be negative 49 over 7, which is negative 7. But negative 7 is rejected, is impossible. Why negative 7 is impossible? Because it will make the denominator 0. So before you solve this equation, you have to notice that x cannot be negative 7. So at the end, the solution set would be 5, because the only possible solution here is negative 7, and negative 7 is not possible. So the solution set is 5. You can use both. Uh, both solutions are correct. The total cost for a product is given by this, where x is the number of units produced. Find the marginal cost and interpret what it means. Well, the marginal cost is the derivative, is the slope, okay? The slope or the derivative. So what is the slope of this line? The slope of this line is 30. So the marginal cost is 30. Uh, find the marginal cost, okay, and interpret what it means. Well, it means, the marginal cost means the cost, it is the cost, of producing one more unit, okay? Because uh, you see 1,200 is the fixed cost. 30x is the variable cost. So when x is increased by one, the cost will be increased by 30. So the cost of producing one more unit would be 30. To solve the system, I have two methods. I can solve it by substitution or elimination. Well, let us solve it by substitution. Let me take 2y to the other side and then substitute with the value of x in the first equation. So I have 4y plus 24 plus y equals 19. Well, 4y plus y is 5y. And if I take 24 to the other side, 19 minus 24 is negative 5. So y is negative 1. So if I put negative 1 here, again, x is 2y plus 12. So x would be negative 2 plus 12 or 10. So the answer the solution is x is 10, y is negative 1. So this is the solution set. Or if you want, you can solve it by elimination. To solve it by elimination, I need to multiply one of the variables. So if I multiply the first equation by 2, I'll have 4x plus 2y equals 19 times 2, which is 38. And here I have x minus 2y equals 12. If you add, I have 5x equals 38 plus 12, that's 50. So x would be 50 over 5, which is 10. And now I put the value of x in any of the equations, for example, in the first equation. So 20 plus y is 19 or y would be 19 minus 20, which is minus one. And then the answer again is 10 and negative one. To solve this inequality, this is a linear inequality. So I have to take the variables in one side and the numbers on the other side. 
But first, I have to expand the right-hand side. So multiplying by 4, this is 12 minus 4x. Bringing 4x to the other side, it would be 7x. Taking 9 to the other side, 9 plus 12 would be 21. Dividing by 7, x is greater than or equal to 3. So the solution set, uh, 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 again, yeah. 3x, yes, so x would be greater than or equal to 3, uh, and the answer is from 3 to infinity. You can check your answer by uh, substituting with 0, for example, which is not here, negative 9 is less than, if x is zero, negative nine would be less than or equal to 12. That's correct. So what is the problem here? Three x minus nine, ah, sorry. This is not greater than, this is less than or equal. So I made a mistake here. This is less than equal. So in fact, x is less than or equal to three. So it would be from negative infinity to three. So please check your answer. Maybe you do a mistake uh, like this. Write the equation of the line that's perpendicular to this line. It's perpendicular to this line and passing through this point. Okay, I know the equation of the line. It's y minus two, which is this one, that equals m, the slope times x minus minus one or plus one. But what is the slope? Well, I know the perpendicular line. So let me find the slope of this line. So I take x to the other side, then I divide by two. So I have negative two x plus six. So the slope of this equation is negative two. So the slope here would be half negative two. You write one over negative two, and then you multiply by a negative sign because the product of the slopes should be negative one. Half times negative two, is negative one because the two lines are perpendicular. So the equation is y minus two equals half times x plus one. You can leave it like this. Or if you like, uh, you can write it y equals half times x plus half plus two if you take two to the other side. So it would be five over two. And that's the final answer. A toys shop sells a certain toy for this amount, if the monthly cost is given by this, write the following linear functions, revenue. Well, the revenue function is defined by uh, the selling price, which is 10.86 times the number of units. Okay, profit function. Well, the profit is defined by the revenue minus the cost. So the revenue is 10.86 minus the cost function, which is 8,000 minus 8.36x. So oh, this is 10.86x. Uh, so 10.86x. Minus times minus would be plus. Okay. Oh, this is a plus, sorry. So minus times a plus would be minus to 10.86x minus 8.36x. If you use the calculator, it's 2.5x minus 8,000. Uh, so that's the profit function. Find the number of toys that must be sold each month in order for the shop to break even. He needs only the number of toys. So to break even, I have two methods. I can write R equals to see the revenue should be equal to the cost uh, and solve, okay? Or I prefer, since I have the profit function, I just put the profit function equals to zero. So this would be the break even. So 2.5x minus 8,000 equals to zero 
or 2.5x equals 8,000, or x would be 8,000 over 2.5, and that's 320. So this is the number of toys to break even. Please solve it uh, using the first method and check that you get the same answer. Consider this function, write the domain and the range. Well, this is a parabola. Uh, there is no square root, there is no one over. So the domain here is a set of all real numbers or from negative infinity to infinity. To find the range, I need to determine the vertex. Well, if the equation of the variable is, is written, of the, of the parabola is written in this form, a times x minus h plus k, then the vertex is h and k. So the vertex here, h minus h, so this is minus one, so h is one, and k plus k plus two, so k is two. So the vertex is one and two. Uh, negative two here means the parabola opens downwards. And this point is the point one and two. So I understand that the range is from negative infinity to two because two is the highest y value. Here he says determine whether the vertex is minimum or maximum. Of course it is maximum because A is negative two and it's less than zero. So the parabola opens downwards. Find the x-intercept. Well, to find the x-intercept, I put y zero. So I need to solve this equation, negative two, x minus one to the power two plus two is zero. And solving this equation is, zero, is, is easy. I'll take two to the other side, to be negative two. Dividing by negative two, I'll have x minus one to the power two equals negative two over negative two, which is one. And now I can use the square root property from here. You don't have to expand this. Just the answer would be x minus one equals plus or minus square root of one, and square root of one is one. So I have two possibilities. Either x is positive one, positive one if you take this one to the other side, or, okay, this is one solution. And the other solution, uh, x would be negative one if you take this one to the other side, it would be negative one plus one, so it is zero. So the x-intercepts are zero and two. The y-intercept, we put x is zero. When I put x is zero, I'll have y equals negative two times zero minus one squared. Well, minus one squared is just one plus two. So negative two plus two is zero. And I can find this immediately. The y-intercept is zero because whenever the x-intercept is zero, immediately the y-intercept would be zero. So to sketch the graph, Zero, zero is x-intercept and y-intercept. Also two is uh, an x-intercept. One, two is the vertex and the graph is going uh, down. So this is the vertex up to here, okay? You can continue this. And also it goes also up to here and it continue like this. So this is the graph of the parabola. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed uh, listening to this uh, video. Have a nice.